2020, 2020, however you like to spin it, it's now our reality. The last decade treated us to some amazing video games like Dark Souls, Breath of the Wild, Smash Bros Ultimate, Pokemon Go, Super Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Awakening, but the future is now. So what if all of us already have extremely clogged backlogs? As humans, we just crave more. We want to know what the future holds, what tomorrow holds. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you 16 of our most anticipated games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in 2020. This list was put in order of when we think these games are going to launch. Now, of course, some of them have hard release dates, and those are fact, but some of these are also, it's, some of it's just pure speculation. So let's just go ahead and take a look. First up on our list, releasing on January 17th, which by the time you see this video, this game's probably already going to be out or nearly out, is Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. This game was originally going to be a more traditional crossover of the Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei series, but ended up turning into its own sort of game. It's very much a JRPG, and many could argue, what defines a JRPG anyways? This, this, this game does, I, I think so. It has anime style characters, turn-based battles, anime cutscenes, Japanese pop idols. Now not everything fits into that Japanese RPG bill, but a lot of it does. This was one of the last few games Nintendo published on the Wii U that we could actually want to see ported over to the Switch, besides Pikmin 3, The Legend of Zelda's, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, Super Mario 3D World, Wonderful 101. I mean, there is still a chunk of games that we want, but man, that list keeps getting smaller and smaller every day. If you didn't catch it already, we recently released a video giving a brief explanation of what Tokyo Mirage Sessions is over on our channel. So we'll drop a link to that in the description down below. Now next up on the 14th of February is Darksiders Genesis. This is a sort of spin-off of the Darksiders series. Now it takes place within the main series, it's a prequel of the first game, but just looking at it looks completely different. It's a isometric hack and slash instead of a third person hack and slash adventure puzzler. For the first time you're able to play as the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, Strife, and his guns suit this new isometric camera angle extremely well. You can also play as War from the original Darksiders, but Strife really is the star of the show in this one. I got to play this really briefly at E3 this past year on, I think it was the Xbox One or the PC version, and it ran really well and was a ton of fun. Following shortly after that on February 25th is the weapon-based 2D fighter Samurai Showdown. It's finally returned for a new generation. It's been like 10 or so years since we've had one of these games, which Samurai Showdown has quite the extensive history of arcade fighters, which most of which are actually available on the eShop if you want to go get them. And they're all around eight US dollars. They're, they're pretty cheap. This new entry has received rave reviews on other platforms, so we're really excited to see if it lives up to that degree of speed and quality the series deserves, especially on Switch. I am personally doing my best to not look at anything Animal Crossing, not look at media because then it won't feel like it takes so long for the game to get here. I'm basically like a little kid and Christmas Day is only a few months away and I've already given my stand on my list and now I just have to wait and see if I get what I want. And the less I think about it, the easier the wait is. But with this sort of job within the media, it makes it really hard to not constantly be looking at things in relation to upcoming exciting video games like Animal Crossing. I, I'm really in a pickle. <laughs> But I can't wait to lose myself in Animal Crossing New Horizons when it comes out. Hopefully I'll get to hang out with some of my favorite villagers like Cube, Kid Cat, Kiki. They'll all be there. It's going to be a great time. I don't know how I'm going to get them there yet because you can't use Animal Crossing Amiibo cards in this game. And I have a huge collection of them sitting in my living room. And Nintendo just doesn't want me to use them because it's not making them money anymore. But darn it! For anyone unaware, Animal Crossing New Horizons basically sends you off to a deserted island to cultivate and customize your own town, quote unquote, from the bottom up. All thanks to that pesky raccoon, but also kind of a good guy, Tom Nook. 
One slight worry that I do have about this game is that they're going to change things too much. Is there going to still be a store like there is in past Animal Crossing games? It looks like you go into a tent to sell things to Tom Nook's nephews now, or grand... Yeah, it's his nephews, not his grandkids. Ugh. Uh, I don't know why the store is the biggest worry for me, but I really liked upgrading the store. It was cool. I'm trying to stay optimistic, and like I said, the less I look at it, the quicker the game will get here, right? That's how it works. Yep. And there you have it! Once we have Animal Crossing New Horizons, we actually won't need any more games, so I scrapped the rest of the list. Oh, whoop! Get ready for more demon slaying action when Doom Eternal releases sometime this year. Question mark? Maybe? March? The Switch version doesn't seem like it's going to be hitting that date. It is being developed by the Port Wizards themselves panic button. Hopefully it won't be long after that. Doom 2016 for me was a little hard to play on the Switch after I played it a little I played it briefly on Xbox One and then switching to Switch the graphics were just it looked like there was someone smeared Vaseline all over the screen. And if I, I think if I started out with the Switch version, I would have been just fine. But since Doom was one of the first games that Panic Button ported to the Switch, hopefully they've learned a few things here and there to make the game just run a little bit better on Switch. A huge surprise announcement last year at E3 was not only that the original Trials of Mana, known as Seiken Densetsu 3, was being released for the first time in the West in the Collection of Mana series, we were also going to be getting a brand new remake from the ground up of Trials of Mana on Switch. Crazy. What? Both announcements in the same day, and it, it took them so long to bring Trials of Mana over to the West, and now we're getting a remake too? What? This game is looking to tell the same story as the original, but the hack and slash gameplay is going to be greatly improved. One of our contributors, Austin, and I, we actually got to sit down with the producers of Trials of Mana at E3 this past year. And so we'll leave a link in the description down below to the article if you want to go read that interview too. And if you're feeling a little impatient to try Trials of Mana, you can go ahead and pick up the Collection of Mana as well, which actually includes the original version of Trials of Mana, and then Secret of Mana, and Final Fantasy Adventure, which is also a mana game. And then announced just a few days ago was the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass. These two new expansions are titled the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra, which are essentially two wild style areas, but with a ton more things to do. They both feature new story beats, tons of new outfits and characters, and a ton of previous generation Pokemon have also already been confirmed for the expansions, like the return of Venusaur and Blastoise. This new expansion also features a few new legendaries, one of which being this little like psychic puppet deer dog character thing named Calrix, which when I typed it into Google to find out how to spell it, it thought I was looking up medication. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's like a big brain on its head or if it's a, a plant or a bulb because it's also a grass type. So are its little like tiny hands going to like unfold off of its head and I don't, it's weird. I don't know what it is. It looks like there's new versions of the legendary birds too. We're not sure if they're, they, I think, I don't think they're going to be just brand new legendary birds because some of them like electric one looks way too much like Zapdos and the, or the other one that kind of resembles Articuno and Moltres like those like if you just showed me those two maybe they're new legendaries but they're too close to not be Galarian forms of, of the legendary birds in my opinion. This expansion pass also seems to be replacing the like supplementary game that they, that Game Freak typically releases, like how they've done Pokemon Emerald or Platinum and so forth. But now they're just releasing this expansion pass for each game. And then you can download it and continue playing with the save file that you already have. So you don't have to start over or anything. And it's also only $29.99, which is, I think from what I've seen is the most expensive expansion pass or like DLC pack that Nintendo's ever released. But there's a lot being packed into this. Next up on the list is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Now, some of you may be surprised to hear about this on our list, but Bikini Bottom is quite the fan favorite among SpongeBob games. One of my friend's dads is super into video games. He just picked him up Luigi's Mansion 3 and he's been playing that since since Christmas. He stopped over at his house one time to drop off some things and I I told him about this new SpongeBob remake and he's I don't want to misquote it, but I'm pretty sure he's like in his 60s and he was he was geeking out about Spongebob. Oh, yeah, yeah I'd play that. Yeah, definitely. And it was it was sweet to see 
getting so excited about a SpongeBob remake. And I know there's tons of other people out on the planet that are also getting excited about this. So it's not a joke. This could be good. Next up on this list with another tentative 2020 maybe date is Persona 5 Scramble The Phantom Strikers. Now this is a hack and slash Musou Warriors games from the Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors team, but with a huge Persona spin. There's a brand new story, new characters, a new Phantom Thief it looks like, and tons and tons of playable characters. You don't just play as Joker. The gameplay seems to be extremely varied. There's personas in the game and there's an open world and there's stealth sections, but then there's also 2D platforming segments. So this game is gonna be extremely interesting and it looks like Atlas is putting in a lot of creative work into the game. I'm not too sure how heavy their involvement is, but, but the level of detail that's put in, they, they have to have their hands sunk into it somehow. The Phantom Strikers releases in Japan in February, so we're hoping that we'll see it in the West soon and maybe, just maybe someday, we'll get the traditional version of Persona 5 because Joker's in Smash. Why can't he just be in his own original game on the Switch? Most of the team at Nintendo Life are extremely huge Streets of Rage buffs. I know Damien specifically is, and so they all had to make sure that Streets of Rage 4 got put on this list. I unfortunately didn't get into them back in its heyday and played my first on some sort of Genesis collection on PS3 or at some point. I enjoyed it and I, I can always appreciate a good street beater like Scott Pilgrim, the video game. This new Streets of Rage is being made by Guard Crush Games and .mu, the team that brought us the beautiful Wonder Boy remake from a few years ago and the team that worked on Windjammers and is working on the second Windjammers. Streets of Rage 4 is also bringing back a few classic characters along with a brand new one, Cherry Hunter. And the original series composers are even returning to compose the game's soundtrack. So if you've been chomping at the bit for a little bit of street chicken, then Streets of Rage 4 will quench that thirst, I'm pretty sure. That's a, that's a joke. Bravely Second? Who? No. Bravely Default 2. Or is it Bravely Default 11? And maybe Square Enix actually just forgot to publish the other eight games in the series. Regardless of what it's called, this new JRPG got revealed at the Game Awards last year. Not much else is known about this other than the fact that it's being developed entirely by the original Bravely Default team, and those are the same people that made Octopath Traveler, in case you didn't know. Hopefully we'll find out more about it soon in an upcoming Nintendo Direct or something, because the trailer ends with it saying that it is going to release in 2020, or at least it just says 2020. Maybe it means more to come in 2020, but hopefully it means this game's coming out in 2020, and well, we'll find out this year if it does. Travis Strikes Again was fine, but, but no, no more, more Heroes, Heroes 3. 3. Now we don't know a ton about it yet, but from what we've seen and from what we've heard, we know that it's going back to its roots and it's going to be a third person hack and slash, and it's going to have a open world. This is the first mainline title in the series and I think 10, 10 ish years or something like that. Like the first one came out when I was in high school, which lots of these games came out when I was in high school or when I was a wee lad. But still, I, I remember playing this on my Wii and being like, this game doesn't belong on the Wii. If my mom sees this, my grandparents, they're gonna freak out. I'm cutting people's heads off. A teaser was released last year at E3 that showed some brief concepts of gameplay. And then another trailer was released at the Game Awards that was more or less an animated introduction that kind of built up what the story is going to be about. There's a little kid and an alien and it's sort of like E.T. You, you should just definitely look it up. The website WCCF Tech did a interview recently with Suda where he revealed that about 35 to 40% of the game was completed back in about November and that the game is finally going to have an open world again like the first one did, which the second one skipped the open world and so did Travis Strikes Again. Now I'm hoping that we get re-releases of one and two on the Switch just because there's there's so many random details in those games that carry over into the next ones that it's that it'd be helpful for people to be able to play those games first. But with the way the story's looking in No More Heroes 3, I think you'd be just fine not playing the original. Sure, you'll miss some some subtle details here and there, some references, but man, there's there's a whole slew of new enemies on Travis's plate, and it, it's gonna be nuts. I'm stoked. Now, another title that's just slated for 2020 is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now, I'm not sure how many of you would remember this, but Xenoblade Chronicles almost didn't come out back in the day. 
And we have the fan organization Operation Rainfall to thank that it actually did come out. Flash forward to today and it's crazy to see that the game has been treated to a remake on 3DS and now another on Switch. Now we're not complaining, a lot of fans of Shulk and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 never got around to playing the original, as it was a fairly expensive title on the Wii, and it's now starting to get expensive again on the 3DS on the secondary market. So it's nice to see this classic come back, and especially with a new coat of paint. Bayonetta 3. It it must have just been announced too early. It got released at the Game Awards a few years ago with a brief trailer, and it got everyone really hyped, but, and then that was it. And now, now we just don't know how to feel. Astral Chain, which was made by Platinum Games, the developers of Bayonetta, actually took our Game of the Year spot last year. So we're not really complaining or anything, we're just confused. In a recent interview with Famitsu Magazine, director Hideki Kamiya said development is progressing smoothly and that they have some interesting things to talk about, but that they have to stay secret for now. So maybe we'll see some stuff in a direct coming up soon, but we don't know. I could see this game launching late, late this year, November, December. Have a big announcement at E3, show off some gameplay, maybe release a demo. Who knows, just when are we gonna see the witch return? Okay, okay, 2020 might be pushing it, but one can hope, we can, we can be hopeful, right? Wouldn't it be great if Nintendo released the Metroid Prime Trilogy, and then they did the old fashioned thing where they, they pack a demo for Metroid Prime 4 into the trilogy, so you have to buy the trilogy, and Nintendo should already know, we're gonna buy the trilogy, and that's the only way you can play the demo, and it'll sell like hotcakes, it'll fly off the shelf. And then they announce that the game's getting a fall release date, or it's even just coming ne next year. We don't want that, but next year, if it has to happen, just, just show us. Or even just give us a cool cinematic of Samus busting up aliens, so that way we can get a good idea of what the main theme and like picture of this game is going to be, because all we've seen is a splash screen, and that's been, it's been almost two years now, I think. Maybe longer, maybe three? Goodness, I don't even know anymore. Two, three years, too long. Too long, that's what. Considering the game had its production halted and completely restarted at the beginning of 2019, it's highly unlikely that this game, a game of this caliber will come out in 2020, especially with how careful Nintendo has been with their IPs and games lately. But you never know. Like I said, one can hope. <laughs> yeah, classic comedian. I know we are. Is it a joke? I I actually don't, I don't know. It, it could be real. There was less than a two year gap in between Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. So, and I mean, they already have the groundwork laid for this new Breath of the Wild game. So it's not impossible to see the sequel launch this year. I mean, we haven't seen much yet. And the reveal was E3. That was, I guess, basically over six months ago now. So they probably have a ton more done on the game. 2020 isn't out of the question. The preview though did leave a lot to be wondered. Will Zelda be playable? Is co-op, is that a possibility? Are traditional dungeons back in the game? How much more adult is this title gonna be? Is it going to be the Majora's Mask to Breath of the Wild? We're dying to learn more about the sequel and we'd be fools to think Nintendo wouldn't spill at least a few rupees at least this year, even if they're not planning to release the game. Just give us something. And there you have it, our most anticipated games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in 2020. <sighs> that year is gonna take some getting used to. Now some of these games we still just don't have a lot of info on, but hopefully an upcoming Direct will shed some light on them. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to keep playing something else. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below what games from the year 2020 you're most excited about, or even just from the near future at all. Let us know. And if you enjoyed this video, then why don't you go ahead and toss on some glasses so that way you can see that subscribe button in 2020 vision and tap it a bunch. Just, just go ahead and click it. And then while you're there, ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we release new videos. Because you, you gotta see them first. It, it helps a lot. It really does. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. It has been, I've, I've had a great time. I've had a great time doing this and I'm so excited for this new year. So thank you for having me. And thanks, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Oh,